Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This time, I'm going down memory lane. I'm down on a southern river, going to catch anything I can. Not really bothered, just one of those days I fancy a day by the river. You can sort of get fed up a little bit with still waters and carp, can't you? After a while, a little bit samey. Harder on the river, I appreciate that. Low, mid-autumn, we're mid-September. Autumn conditions. I'm going to try and do something I never do before. It's just pound a swim with a big heavy feeder a guy um, up at one of the carfish who actually gave me this big feeder this is too big and heavy for me I can't use it I thought hmm I know where I can use it when our choice of swims always something difficult to make on a river being as it's very low I'm looking for as much oxygen content in the water as much flow as much current as I can because I feel the fish aren't going to want to lay in that sort of stagnant water in back eddies too much in the slower sides maybe the pike will do but stuff like chub, dace, barbel, anything like that, like a bit of flow, especially a barbel. And I've never forgotten, way downstream, about 40 years ago, I had a huge catch by watching where a funnel of weed went, and it must have been feeding all the food down there. I think I had something like 106 pounds, nine ounces of barbel, mainly barbel, to about nine pound five. Probably got the old black and white pictures somewhere. But I've always remembered that funneling effect, and I've noticed it up here, there's a funnel effect. All through the stream of weed, a constant flow, and then up here, it shoots it down. Now I've already seen either sea trout or salmon jumping. They like fast water, so I'm figuring there might be barbel in there. I've seen one or two flashes. Who knows? Got to get lucky, got to be in it to win it, but that's my choice of swim. In uh, hot, sunny conditions, you're going to have to wait till the evening, Probably my best chance will be hanging on here. Uh, to sort of last knockings, that is traditional barbel fishing time, but I'm gonna fish the day out anyway and see what else I can catch. But if you can find something with a decent bit of flow, I think you've always got a chance, even in the middle of the day. So with that swim, I think funneled from all those years ago that I remember when I had a big catch there, sticks in your mind, doesn't it? You know, the same configuration of a swim. I'm gonna fish one feeder at the top and one feeder further down the back and who knows I might even try in the in the shallow corner where I've seen uh, uh, sea trout dace and baby chub nothing big nothing big don't get me wrong but wow brings back some memories eh ah right pair of avon rods quiver tips on them oh, well, quiver tip, I've got quiver tip on one and I've got a, a straight just a straight avon because uh, I want to have a go float fishing later on um, on the other couple of reels six pound line straight through and this is the feeder and this is how I intend filling it up now years ago we used to use maggots down here a lot don't think anybody uses many maggots down here now maybe just for dace fishing I'm using cubes of lunch of meat just regular tin lunch of meat there on the hook I've got one of these feeders I haven't got a clue what it's called it's called a 56 gram, I'm not going to say the name, it's 56 gram, it's got a grip on the back, it's like a sort of one of those method type feeders. Um, but it's got the, the safe pull out here, shoot a fish, obviously get snagged in the stream weed, it can pop that out, pull that back in. So it's like a sort of bolt rig effect which I've not used generally down here. Let me just show you the hook, I've got from there about quite a long tail, over two feet, over two feet to the hook there. The hook's uh, camasan, size four, and the ground bit I'm using is a mishmash of absolutely everything in there. But it's got the Bailey's horse feed, which is quite stiff. A bit tricky to mix up, it goes very, very gluey, but in this fast, streamy current, I'm casting in a run between streamer weed. I'm gonna pack, and look, I've got little bits of leftover boilies. Well, I don't use boilies, I think I bought, I've ever bought a boilie in my life. These would be my sons, I would imagine. I'm not a boily person myself, but I'm going to get some of this. It's um, a bit of ground bait, but no, you can make anything you want as long as it's quite the stickier you get for faster water. That's the way I work it. So here is the feeder. These are little supports that help hold it, and I'm going to mould it around there. I'm just going to mould it around there. All this will break up. Now I go right around the feeder. See underneath? A lot of people don't do that. I do because I know it's all going to get washed off in the current. You can even go right round to the swivel and I pack it quite tight because in a fast current in the stream of weed the little fish will nibble away at that and the big fish will as well. Now normally I'm guessing you fish with like a normal method feeder, very very short. The lunch meat I'm going to be using is this, 
regular pork lunch we're going to push the hook through but I'm going to turn it so that the hook if you can see that is just hanging hanging loose that piece of meat's hanging there so hopefully a barbel or a chub or anything I don't hold that much uh, hope a chub here I must admit um, it's going to nick in there and pull up tight now I've got quite a long tail there because I feel they might be a bit nervous of this size of ball of ground but with all that breaking off further downstream they come up first and they should find that now far, far swirly water you might need to put a little shot a BB shot just on here just to anchor it down at the moment I'm sort of suck it and see I don't really know how fast the current I don't want this whipping and swirling around if I can see when the sun gets up a bit more I might have to put a BB there to sink it now you can go longer or you can go shorter I'm just casting out and seeing if I can catch anything at all and the benefit of that of course is that all those particles coming off those two feeders I'm firing in one after the other. Even if I don't get a fish till this evening, those particles are going downstream, so I will try float fishing, trotting a big balsa, even body balsa float through, but I'm going to give it at least two hours of the feeder to try and build the swim up, because most of the fish will be down the bottom end of the swim, and gradually going to be working their way up with confidence. So, good two hours of the feeder, pump it in, get plenty of bait in there, plenty of activity, and I feel if I do trot through, I might get some dace, might even get a chub. I've just, I've just dropped the feeder down there with a big ball of ground bait, lunch of meat on the back end of it. I'm seeing small fish attack the feeder, but I'm seeing something else twist down the back. It's taking something, but it's very long fish. It could, could be an eel, which is really early in the day to get one. I have to say, you normally get them in the evening and use them worm. So kind of surprise there. We were on. We were on with something, I don't know what it is. Actually, I can still see the ground bait. I might have made it too stiff. It's still stuck on there. What is that fish? I was right, guys. It's an eel. Pretty nice one. Two to catch in the daylight. Come on. Mm, don't think it's quite net size. I'm going to take a risk. You just have to trust me. It's an eel. Time as well wait at the feeder. I'm going to swing this one first and show it to you later. Got him! <laughs> there we go, people. Whoa! A nice eel, and look, that feed I made is sticking in there. It's been nibbled away from, to show you there, the back end of the feeder. Just from the back end of the feeder. It was up here, it's been nibbled away there, and that is in about five, ten minutes. I'm really normally not pleased to catch an eel, but. Look guys, at the end of the day, a fish is a fish. It's one of those sessions where I just need to go down memory lane and catch whatever else is left in this fish. Well, used to be really famous fishery. Not for me also. Nice to see it. The forecast isn't great today. They've given torrential rain coming in this afternoon and severe thunderstorms with a chance of flooding, localised flooding. But what they do get in this river in September, and I fished it back in the late 60s, they get a run of sea trout about this big. They get a lot bigger sea trout, obviously, but a, a, a run of these sea trout. They come and lay on the gravel. I've got an underwater camera here. I have spotted some down there. While 
there's still a little bit of light around before the clouds come over I might see if I can at least get you a picture of a wild sea trout these are wild fish not stock fish born in the river hatched as eggs down to the sea and then they come back in the autumn now they get some really big ones up into double figures I have seen them many many years ago and I haven't caught one myself I have caught smaller ones in there on the fly but now they're just choked with weed you can't fly fish at all really I'll, I'll take the camera down just see if I can at least show you one or two so just look at the top half of the picture where it's shaded you can see those shapes shooting around they're not chub they are sea trout I'm going to put the camera under the water and just look there's the sea trout and there's some over in the background good shot of a sea trout there and it's coming up here in a minute folks although that's a sea trout underneath between these two bridges I lowered it to what's called a salmon stone and as I put the camera down deeper and deeper in the river you should see at the very bottom of the picture there's the stone and the salmon's laying head to the left tail to the right can you see it just there just about to shoot away that is a salmon with a prawn in front of it Right, there we go guys that paid off going to the float small chub down the back end of the swim there look it's only a little fish isn't it I had some frozen maggots they're not live maggots they're just frozen ones I found out and pulled out the ground bait and did the trick so that's exactly how I thought it would be the smaller fish are at the back of the swim so just a small chub I would call that a chublet but step in the right direction and I'm going to stick it out with a float. This is my float here. We've well, seen these before. It's just a regular bodied Avon float. There's the body, balsa Avon float. And I've got a couple of trebles, I think they are. Just here. A number eight, just take it down a bit. Three maggots on about, well, I suppose it's about size 12. Decent size hook for dace, but it's done the job. Now I mentioned moving downstream this time. I've been using cheese. I've gone well, a good 30 yards down from the uh, from the place where I was baiting up with the swim feeders because a lot of that feed is going to be working its way down there. And by float fishing the bottom end of the swim, I can at least have a chance of picking up a fish. It's somewhat worth noting. Look, if you're ground baiting in a river, the fish are unlikely to be upstream of the ground bait unless they've eaten all the ground bait. So with the flow going downstream to the ground weight, it's far better to work your way down, either cast down further if you don't get bites, or like I have here, missed a bite by the look of it, run a float through and see if you can't pick up something at the bottom end of the swim. A little bit better chub this time guys, on the float. On cheese, on cheese this time. Here he comes, full of weed. Take you over to him. Probably easier to take the camera to the fish. Well, he's only a small one. Bigger than the last one. Wouldn't call it a chublet. It is actually a small chub. There we go. And that's by changing the cheese, small pieces of cheese, again moving even further down the swim with the float. And look, size of the mouth, even on a small fish like this. Now for all the bird watchers out here, here's a lovely pretty bird. I think he's just been swallowing like a pound roach there. Now there's one thing he needs, and he needs it, and it's travelling at about 600 feet per second per second, and that's both barrels of a 12 gauge. I like birds, I don't like cormorants. Now sometimes you might find it difficult recognising what a bite is because with a quiver tip when you're fishing in holes and runs in the stream of weed the weed's moving backwards and forwards like this if your line goes over the edge of that you're going to get a slow draw and then relaxing of the quiver tip on the top of your rod more likely with a quiver tip so all you can do is recognise how far down it goes how far back it goes anything sharper could be a fish obviously if it pulls right down hard it would be a fish it just wants for much sharper bites and so just get used to the rhythm of the stream of weed so you recognise it and you don't keep striking all the time when the weed rests up against the line.
Now if you get a bit bored during the day and you want to amuse yourself with some float fishing, as I was with the chub, you can actually catch and target the smaller fish. Hey, let's say you haven't got any maggots, obviously you can't go to the tackle shop in the middle of the day. If you just take a small supply of these standard coarse pellets, they're four mil, that's all they are, just a standard four mil pellet like that. Keep them dry, you can use those like you would do maggots. And if you just feed them in six or a dozen at a go, over about five minutes across a shallow gravel run, you should get some dace and roach going almost sure small chub as well will move in. But you need to use a small band on them. That's the way to hold them on. Maybe something like a 16, smallest hook you can use. In fact, if I've got one in my tackle box, I don't normally go down to 16s. I'll see if I can't catch a fish because it's gone a little bit quiet on the feeder at the moment. So I'm gonna give it a rest. Had a lot of salmon, a lot of sea trout rolling in the swim and jumping. And I find that's never good for barbel anyway. So it might be a quiet middle of the day period. Let's have a go see if we can catch something else. Here we go guys. I used, I didn't have any of those pellet bands, but I used a piece of paste, I mashed it up into a piece of paste, those pellets. And there you go, a cracking roach there. Traditional Amstraven roach. Not a big fish, but it's good enough. It just shows you what you can do, small paste baits, take some of those dry pellets with you, and you can at least catch something. That is a nice fish. There we go guys, different species, that one, all youngsters love to catch, that's a dace, only a small one, they get some very big ones here, if you if you fish with maggots you undoubtedly get some really big ones, but it just goes to show you that it's the size of the hook and the size of the bait that makes a difference to catching the fish there. So there's another one, that's a dace, but if you fish with some maggots, that's fine, you can do it all day long, but at least this way if you take some hard dry pellets with you, you can at least get something out of the day and salvage it it's a small fish while you're waiting for the barbel to come. There's something about float fishing that really is fascinating. It's a delightful way of fishing. It's very successful and you get fish. They don't all have to be big fish when you're float fishing. The very fact that when you see that float dive under the water and you strike and set the hook, it doesn't really matter what size the fish is because it's the bite, the excitement of controlling the float through the river without disturbing the bait it's your main visual bite indication that you strike, get the fish. If it's a big fish, great. If it's a smaller fish like this chunky dace, and that's really not a small fish for a dace, so much the better. If you haven't tried float fish in the river, it's not easy, but I strongly urge you to at least give it a go. There you go, guys. It's different to the dace. You see it's a lot bigger mouth, that's a chub, small chub, still got the red fins, can be confused a bit with the roach but the size of the mouth should tell you and generally a, a black edge to the tail there for all the youngsters out there look for the black edge of the tail. There we go, Whoa, keep still, keep still, keep still. I'm quite enjoying this. Now I just want to show you you can also squeeze the ground bait flat to hold it and stop it rolling away or deed like I do, you push a stone right down in the middle of the ground bait and fold it over. We used to do this 40 or 50 years ago down here on this river for barbel and you fill the hole up with maggots and then push a stone into it. Now I'm going to throw this out in fairly shallow waters just so I can get the camera on it and look at the way the small fish go down in the cloud eating all the bits and pieces but once they've eaten all those bits and pieces they go back upstream, let's pull the camera down there again, and look, they smother the back of that feeder and nibbling away. Now that action does actually attract a lot of other species as well. I'm a firm believer that even though these small minnows are nibbling away at the bait, is attracting the bigger fish. They're gonna see what the attention is. And there's some other species in there. If you take trouble to look, there's either baby barbel or gudgeon, which I've never really caught a lot of in this river, or I think stone loach. They could perhaps be stone loach. You might see, I think I can just, I see the odd fish in there that looks different. Let's just let this uh, sequence go down now. Towards the back there, I've got the luncheon meat. You can see the square of luncheon meat where the fish are attract, attracted to it and they're chewing away. They don't break that up as quickly as they do the ground bait. But that action 
is what attracts fish like barbel, chub, any of the bigger species. You can see it doesn't really take them long to demolish all this. And of course, as an angler, you don't know what's going on down there deep in the river until you wind in. There's those other fish on the bottom. Look, are they loach? They're a different colour to the minnows or are they gudgeon? Somebody out there, tell me. Meanwhile, I'm still piling out the dace on that float fishing method. Guy's got a really big fish on him. Trying to get in the net for you. I've been waiting and waiting. Oh, I think he's in. He might be a small barbel. What the hell is it? Oh, oh my God, I can hardly see. I'm hoping you can see this is an immense chub. This possibly might be the biggest chub I've ever had. How big is that chub, for goodness sake? Seven pounds? I don't know. The hook has fallen out. Oh man, look at the size of the fish. I'm just gonna try and put the reel there to give you some idea of the size of this fish. What a result. I never thought I would get a chub that big from here. That is a clonker of a chub. My goodness me. How big must that one be? Hoping you can see it all people. It's immense, there's the reel. Just to give you an idea of such, I haven't got any scales to weigh this fish, but it is absolutely a totally awesome chub. I've got no tripod. <laughs> I'm in the proverbial mess. I'm gonna tune that down just a touch. Look, the camera's crooked, guys. It can't be helped. Look at the size of this chub. I can't believe it myself. It's got to be seven pounds. It's got to be close to seven pounds. Certainly sexes. What do you guys think out there? A fantastic fish to close out the program with. OMG, lunch and meat behind that method feeder with that ground bait. That is, without a doubt, guys, I barely see that's the biggest chub. I think I've ever caught in my life. Holy cow, why did I not bring my scales? Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hope you got a few tips on fishing the rivers there. A world chuff with this. That's a beautiful fish. Look at the size of it, let's get it back. I might squeeze one more cast out. <laughs> That's a stonker of a chub. I'm gonna try and recover him. There he is on the gravel, hopefully you can see him. What an animal chub that is. That's a really big fish. Wow, what a beauty. I'd say he's six of anybody's money. Adam, you might be able to see a lot of mosquitoes here. Oh, what an amazing result.